Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 363 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah. (laughs) Well, that was different. (laughs) All right, I'll do it. The Cryer Media Network. There we go. Da, 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 da. Today, recording day is Thursday, April 18th, 2024, and it is a rainy day. Definitely a rainy day. <laughs> April showers will bring me out flowers. You know, um, I'm. it's been pretty rainy the last couple of, last week, and uh, you know, normally that makes me, uh, well, I don't really get any seasonal affective disorder or that type of thing, but it. Um, uh, every now and then you just want, like, some sun and uh right now i'm actually quite okay with it given the water table so it's just like you know bring it on steady doses you know no no big flood drops or something like that or cloud you know just a little bit every day (laughs) and uh for those who remember uh last year or last fall i had uh, planted some croci in uh, croci bulbs on the front lawn and then about two days later i saw like holes all over the place where squirrels and i thought damn they're not gonna have any more well so far more than half have popped up so far so hey seems i did good (laughs) uh a big thank you goes to our podcast funding sponsors the pepper master the misfy mysteries from corvid moon publishing and canadian tarot.com as you can hear with me as always is my good friend mr grizzly and sir how's your mental health today you know, it's, um, I think it's pretty good. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I was, we, I was at the memorial, the celebration. The, yes. Uh, well, we should tell people actually first because they don't know, but, uh, um, recently, uh, there's someone on the online community, uh, in Twitter, uh, went by the handle Scribulatora on, uh, on, uh, Shitter or Zitter or Twitter, Twitter. or whatever, or error. Yeah, whatever he's calling it. Uh, her real name was Catherine. Um, she was a, a delightful soul. Mm. Um, very, very well informed. Cared a lot about politics. When we say democracy is something that you do, she was engaged. Uh, she was not, uh, she did not believe it was a spectator sport. Uh, she um, believed in temperance. Our comments were always. Uh, had a tone that was, you know, um, calm and uh, not uh, not prone to uh, fly off the handle or, you know, go into hyperbole. Uh, just, you know, one of those accounts that's, tempered. you know, tempered. And when you, um, uh, you could always rely on the quality and on the content. And uh, even though, uh, Scribulator and I, or Catherine and I, had never met in person. Um, there's a lot of what she has written uh, over 
the years because you know mm. the show uh, we're closing our third year, but it was a blog for uh, for a while. Um, there's a lot of what she has said that either influenced or found a or found a way a bit or a piece or a chunk in, in a lot uh, that I've done uh, throughout the years. So basically, yeah, I've stolen and I've been inspired from her a lot. <laughs> so um, yesterday. Uh, there was a gentleman uh, named Bruce Fanjoy, and his name might be familiar to you because he is running in uh, the Carlton Electoral District uh, to unseat Pierre Podiev. He's uh, been very uh, visible and very active in terms of going on, knocking on doors like for over a year now, maybe mm -hmm. close to two, to start making the case. And I'm guessing that they did know each other and inspire each other, they and did. he held... Um, a sort of get together at a pub last night in order to honor her. And uh, Mr. Grizzly, uh, you went, so I will allow you to take it from there. Yeah, I was able to attend because it's literally just up the street from me. It's a bit of a walk, but not a big deal. It's, you know, it's, it's a pub I've been to countless times over the last 30 years, 30 some odd years, I think, since it opened. So I walked in and, and uh, there was a retirement party going on in the front and they said, oh yeah, the, the memorial's in the back section by the stage. So I walked over and sure enough, and there was Bruce. I met Bruce right away and had a nice chat with him and, and another a group of other people who were there. I'm not name dropping because I don't want to do that, but it's somebody who I've been uh, familiar with, I'll say. Um, how you doing? Uh, she, I, I've seen her and her partner and her daughter at the Let's On It's Pump countless times for dinner and I was hey how's it going because you know you see somebody you're familiar in the neighborhood uh, but we never actually chatted until last night and I walked in I go I introduced myself and I go wait a minute I know you and she goes I know you <laughs> from the pump so we had a nice chat and um, let's just say I, I had a chat with Bruce about coming on the show at some point and he says look let me let me I said no pressure no rush if you want to come in sometime by all means please do so I understand you're very busy right now I get it. We're not offended. Not in the least. But the invitation is open. I extended the invitation good. to James good. as well and had a chance to have a nice chat with James. I said, and, and Oh, good. If you want to join us someday for a podcast, I like him. It, it'd be wonderful if you could join us sometime. He says, I, I might do that. You know, yeah. uh, uh, for those listening good. at home again, uh, James is a uh, handle at dread underscore Tory on, uh, yes. on Shitter again. Sorry, <laughs> Mr. Grizzly. So uh, we had a, a lovely chat. There were some just wonderful people there who were really, you know, saying how much they were influenced by Scribulatora, myself included, talking about how one of the things I learned from reading her writing, and, uh, you know, you, you helped uh, help me with this as well, too, was to curb my uh, wanton desire to fly off the handle and drop expletives at people who are being arseholes. Try and come, come at them with a, a tempered, uh, level-headed, communicative stance so that maybe you can get them to talk with you. She was really good at that. Me mm. less so, but I, you know, I did work in construction for 29 years. So you have to understand old habits die hard. And when you're used to dealing with people who can be rather knuckle dragging Neanderthalic, and I'm not saying that that's what the construction world is like. I'm not saying that I worked in it, but you will encounter people like that. You'll encounter people like that everywhere in every profession. Right period. Okay. Trust me, you will. You will. <laughs> but I, I, I still have this tendency to fly into defensive mode and get ready. I'm mm -hmm. a goaltender. I was a defenseman. That's who, that's my stance. You know, you get picked on a lot when you're a child, you, you get into this mode and you stay there. So as I'm trying to be less abrasive in my defensiveness, I'm trying to temper it with, you know, inviting conversation which is what the whole asmr channel is about mm -hmm. but one of the things i had said to to james and, and bruce was that well the crowd the crowd was that was there was that you know i'm i learned to temper my temper to bring it down to dial it back to think you know and and james said you know sometimes she would write something and read it and then delete and that's often good write that angry email don't send it read it sit on it for a bit think about it and then come back 
and go, oh yeah, that, that was a lot of anger. Let's just dispense with the anger and come back at it with a level-headed thought process, which is not, like I said, it's not always easy to do, especially when you worked in an abrasive environment. And abrasive by the fact that when you work in construction sites, you're hearing, and I'm not even referring to the people, it's constant noise, constant hammering, constant nailing, drilling, the sound of skyjacks backing up constantly. It's just a, it's, it's a chaotic environment and it's a dangerous one. So you're always ready to go. So I'm trying to curb myself of that. My current line of work helps that greatly because I get to deal directly with wonderful people who want to be wonderful to me. I guess I went on a bit of a diatribe tangent there, but what I'm trying to say is Scuba Tour's writing has helped me tremendously. It's also taught me an awful lot about the political system in this country. And everyone that was there basically had, you know, very similar things to say. Her writing was so brilliant, so mm. insightful, mm. so tempered, and so and it's dead not on like, accurate. And it's not like she couldn't have an edge. Oh, no. No, no. She but chose not to... Yeah, it was it was a tempered edge. Yes, like I have a tweet from her at one point, and when we were talking about um, you know uh, the conservatives opposing the free trade deal with Ukraine, I was like, imagine the lack of self awareness and outright arrogance in thinking that another sovereign nation that has accepted climate change requires an opposition party in another country to quote fight the carbon language on their behalf. This that is the weakest sauce imaginable. So yes. she had an edge. Oh yeah, yeah. She could throw down. Oh, yes. But not one swear word, not one no. insult, no. not one punch down. Just like, I see you, I see it, mm -hmm. I call it. And that was the thing about her. She was great. Um, I don't know this for myself, but is James Catherine's husband? No, they were partners. The partners? Not, okay. They weren't married. Okay. Partners. Um, he announced it uh, to us by saying, mm -hmm. Catherine passed away earlier this week after a brief battle with cancer surrounded by those who loved her. I know she touched many on this platform over the years. To them, this news will come as a dreadful blow. It's a loss beyond calculation. It scarcely seems real. Yeats once wrote, quote, in dreams begin responsibility. Catherine kept the sign in a place where she would seat immediately upon waking each day. In word and deed, Catherine admirably discharged her responsibility to help foster a society where integrity and compassion prevail, relations of reciprocal obligation are nurtured, and love is acknowledged as the supreme law. That responsibility is also ours. Let us brace ourselves to the task, and let us never capitulate, retreat, or flinch. Let's not make Catherine have to come back and kick our asses, and I'm glad he said that because she will and she will find you and she will haunt you until you surrender. Yes. <laughs> so uh, if you're on Twitter, keep it cool. Yeah. All right. I've not um, always done that. And I, 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 I can't say I'm always going to be cool headed and level headed in the future. There's like, a time and place to not be. And that's true. There is a time and place to not be. It, that is absolutely true. There are but times when you need to get your hackles up, right? But they are not every day, every week. <laughs> every, no. It's like they come up like this. I've had one, mm -hmm. one I've had in the last one. two, three years. <laughs> and that was the day that that guy stepped off his porch mm -hmm. and said the F word at us. And, and, and it didn't end in UCK. Yes. Yes, it was not an invitation to a good time. Let's put it that way. No, no. So, um, <laughs> no. um, so for, uh, and this, this is a beautiful thing here that's going on online um, for some people that were there or people that were not there uh, at some point yesterday. Um, a lot of people were uh, putting a, a tribute of a glass and this mm -hmm. one was my favorite because uh, here's the Scribulatora and a little doggy treat for Molly. Uh, who was her, one of her loves, and uh, because pets are family, and had uh, crossed the Rainbow Bridge before she did. Mm. So uh, hopefully uh, Molly's having a wonderful time playing fetch or something or getting some uh, good scritches wherever they both are right now. Um, Indeed. So um, thank you. And... Um, 
you know, uh, just to put a point on it, because James is her partner, um, James is equally that kind of an influence. So um, I thank him personally last night for his writing. I said I would, how eloquent yeah, he writes. You know, yeah. uh, I would um, say that uh, they were probably a match made on earth and in heaven. Mm. Agreed. So I could see Agreed. the connection of the minds there. These are, these are two people that were probably not only in love with each other, but in love with each other's minds. I, I would think so. I, yeah. I, who, who are we to say? Well, I don't know. You just look we, at I, I don't know them well enough, but I can just tell us that you can't get two people who write like that, that have this calm disposition, can't say that this is, I cannot imagine a reality in which that would not have been a mutual adoration society. Mm, I just can't. Uh, so um, to put a point on that, um, when I first heard of her passing and when I saw the tributes coming in, and my, well, my first thought was, oh, no. <laughs> no, no. Um, but I mean, yes. she had been battling cancer, and you know, she was open and open about it. Uh, I, I didn't but know when I happened. saw the, yeah. Uh, but when I saw the, um, all the tributes, my um, might be a little selfish to think that, but uh, my one of my first thoughts was, wow. Because online, sometimes can seem impersonal. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because, oh, I have my online friends. Well, those are not really friends you never met in real life. Uh, some online friends surprised. actually are. You'd be yeah. really surprised. There's a lot of people that says, I've never met her, and so I can't believe I'm so affected. But, yeah, there are people. So you never know the way you play a role in people's lives. And uh, never occurred to me, never occurred to me that just being online, you know, often not even showing your face on Twitter over a period of time that you could be someone who plays uh, such a role in someone's life. And now that I know it's possible, the first thought that came to me is, gee, you know, when my time comes, uh, you know, I hope that the people that uh, I've met and that I know from online only, I can only hope and wish that they think as highly of me as they think of her. So, whew, okay. Um, I can't even say not the start I didn't, I think was going to get because yes, I know, I know I, I, we, we wanted to talk about that to open. Mm-hmm. So, um, but um, I'm actually a little, um, Verklempt. you know, when you, Verklempt, no, not so much, but you know, sometimes when you get uh, that energy right mm-hmm. here in the sort of sternum solar plexus, that's sort of like, uh, you're vibrating a little bit when mm-hmm. something means something to you and got a, a little bit of that going on there. So that's, if you see me go a couple of times, that's uh, me trying Take to get some of that energy out. <laughs> All right. Um, moving on. Uh, okay. So we had the budget mm-hmm. and, um, couple of things happened uh but one of the things uh that happened is uh yesterday was the day that um the whole social media went oh but won't yes. someone please think of the 0.13 percent pretty much uh, so uh i don't know if this is a thing but yesterday i spotted a whole bunch of accounts that had cfp in their handle i'm guessing that's for certified financial planner and uh, uh i don't know if there's something that says blue check mark plus cfp in your handle equals arsehole uh but i encountered three of them and it was three for three batting 1000 mm-hmm. on okay you tell me that i'm missing the point on this capital gains inclusion about how it's so unfair because it's like, Oh my God, the rich, you know, people really took a big hit. It's like, you didn't take a hit. You were slightly tickled with a feather feather. No, it's a big hit. No, no. A big hit would have been 75, 80% inclusion rate plus a wealth tax plus a tax on corporate excess profits. Mm -hmm. That would have been a hit. You got tickled by a mild feather. 300,000 of the largest trusts and companies are getting affected by that. People are going like, well, what about the doctor that makes $250,000 a year? Well, it's like if you're a doctor and 
all you make is two hundred fifty thousand a year, and you don't have another source of income, um, and the, and all that two hundred fifty thousand is considered capital gains. Let's just say, mm -hmm. um, at most, because I'm not sure if it's like two hundred fifty thousand and up or two hundred forty nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine and lower. And it's, at worst, you're affected on one whole dollar. Yeah, it's literally above that threshold. So. 300,000 of the largest corporations and trusts and 40,000 of the richest Canadians reporting an average income of $1.4 million a year. If neither of these are you, you are not affected. At, at all. So At all. And your principal residence down. is not affected at all. So you have all these people. And here's the thing, also on the media, like all this breathless coverage about, oh my God, investment. And, people. and it's like, it was one thing in the budget that affects 0.13% and they're giving it media attention. Like if you sell your house tomorrow, you are screwed. And I say, it is, that's no. not, that's not what's happening. No. The amount of mis and disinformation and outright lies I'm reading online. It's just disturbing. But the amount of coverage this is yeah. getting as opposed, Oh my God. So, and here's the thing. They raised one tax. One. One tax. And it's like, there was, it's the only taxation to the negative in terms mm -hmm. of money coming in and out of your pocket in the budget at all. There's no wealth tax on high earners. There, and there are actually tax and cha taxation changes for the better. For example, there's a lifetime exemption for selling a firm fishing enterprise or small business, or small business. So those are exemptions. Mm -hmm. There's an entrepreneur tax credit to encourage startups. Oh, looks like we, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Oops, sorry. There's, <laughs> there's an entrepreneur tax credit to encourage startups and scale-ups to grow their business. Uh, there's the small and medium businesses, about 600,000 of them. Uh, they probably wouldn't be affected by this, but that are going to get a part of the, uh, that are going to get a carbon rebate now. So it's not like, you know, it's like, oh, they just, they, 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 they came in, they raised taxes on you again. It's like, it's not on you. Number one. Yes. So yeah, let's so, address the people leaving Canada, shall we? You need to calm down. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And then you got all these people going, it's like, oh, so, you know, right away, it's like, oh my God, it's like, how many people are getting ready to sell their house before the June 25th deadline or whatever? It's like, don't do that. Yes, everybody's going to sell their house at the same time. Who's going to buy them? Corporations will have four landlords in the country. Yeah. No, but it's sort of the like feudal system. I know. It's sort of like, well, gee, I'm selling my house now. Well, it's like, great. The plan's working already. More housing yeah. available. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Trudeau. Oh, my God. I can't believe this. I'm going to move to another country. Or I'm going to get my taxes treated better. Really? Because last I saw you were a chiropractor. Uh, <laughs> don't know. Do, if you see anybody saying, hey, or is trying to pitch you, hey, you want to sell your house before the deadline so you don't have it? Don't do it. <laughs> we usually don't give financial advice on the show, but this one, don't do it. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> so, well, I guess yesterday in, in the House of Commons during question period, uh, Polyev just came out and flat out said, we will cut the rent. How? Yeah. How are you going to do that? Yeah. He's just saying, he, he's just, I, I don't even want to talk about him other than the yeah. little bit, then we absolutely have to, if we're going to show some reaction. Now, um, how would I put it? Okay. So we have um, Mr. Uh, Jagmeet Singh, because the mm -hmm. next question usually, while everybody's crying, while all the rich people are crying themselves out that they're going to have to pay a little more. Oh. Um, well, you know, they're very, very sensitive souls, rich people. <laughs> they're, they're very misunderstood. You know, it's like, it, it, it's hard. It's really hard having so much money and mm -hmm. thinking about all the ways to make sure that even though you have too much, someone doesn't get a cent of it. That you don't do anything now. And here's the other, you know, it's like, we're going to take all our money and go elsewhere. It's like, no, they're not. No, they're not. 
Canada is a country that's safe. It is stable. It is secure. It is free. Corporations that come here, unlike the United States, don't necessarily have to cover health care. You get access to one of the healthiest and most educated workforces in the entire world. I know. You do not have to hire tons of security to keep your thing, your plant or whatever safe because mm-hmm. someone from the community who is starving is going to come and try to burn them. You got a good thing here. You get a lot. I know American for your taxes that, that opens people. offices here. I'm like, yeah. why did they open their head office here? Because guess what? In Canada, we have health care and the company doesn't have to pay for health insurance. Yes. If you want to bring people in from around the world to come to work, they're happy to come to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you rich people. You get a lot for the taxes you avoid paying. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps zip it. Less greedy, more grateful. The greedy part is what got you a bigger inclusion. Kind of what I was saying. Because you weren't willing to do it on your own. We had to do it for ourselves. That's kind of what I was saying yesterday in my words of wisdom at the end of yesterday's show. A little heated, uh, maybe a little less tempered and not very polite, but effectively the same thing you say zip it i say shut your freaking pie hole like really you know how much money i paid in taxes last year yeah triple what i earned shut up yeah take a tip from mark twain it is better to keep your mouth closed and let everybody think you are a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt yes right (laughs) just like these people um so um, we had uh, the interesting part of the, about this budget here is that uh, people are wondering about uh, Mr. Singh, Mr. Jagmeet Singh, because um, he made a couple of interesting moves uh, <laughs> prior to the budget uh, being down. Um, he kind of started saying that, um, well, there was a vote in the House of Commons, let's put it this way, on to whether or not to have the meeting mm-hmm. that everybody seems to be asking on the carbon tax and whatnot for the premiers. And it seems that the NDP voted with the conservatives and said, yes, we should have this meeting. Now, you have to understand, right, the NDP, well, first of all, if you think of environment stuff, we think of the Green Party. But we always stereotypically would think of the NDP as being the party that would be most pro reducing cheese or pro measures for the environment because they are to the left of the liberals. And even though environmental conservation traditionally on paper was a conservative issue now, because you know, everything is like left versus right. It seemed to be a left thing. Yes. So you would think, that it would be the NDP, the traditional conscience of the nation, that would say, hey, the nation is burning. Let's maybe do something about that. But it seems that the when it comes to the environment, uh, it's been the liberals that have had the stronger track record. They have the stronger program. Even in the last uh, election, everybody mm-hmm. was just like, NDP, what did you do? You just like surrendered the whole environment question to the liberals. They're, they put out their plans, and the NDP plan was just atrocious. It didn't even come close. Uh, to what uh, the liberals were putting up. So uh, for some reason, uh, the NDP is, um, I'm not going to say not all on board, uh, but uh, plays some fast and loose every now and then. And I guess Mr. Singh saw this as an opportunity to get some contrast with the prime minister by saying, hey, yeah, we should have this meeting. And then I guess he must have gotten an earful. So because said, hey, the meeting, that seemed to be a first flip-flop. And then two days later, he came back and said, oh, don't think that just because I asked for the meeting, it doesn't mean that I don't support carbon pricing. The purpose of the meeting from the premiers is to say, hey, you don't let us do it our own way. When the law is expressly written, say, hey, you get first crack at doing it your own way. And if it doesn't meet a standard, then we come in. So Jagmeet Singh, you just asked for a meeting 
voted in the House, given the impression, PR-wise, that maybe you weren't all in on carbon pricing in order to have a meeting to discuss, allegedly, changing the way we do things to the way we do things. Dude. <laughs> and then you had to flip-flop two days later. Oh, whoa, 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 maybe not. <sighs> this man is not very smart. I I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that you have to try and find some contrast, but my God, you have to pick your moments. You have to pick your moments, and, and this one wasn't it. This one definitely wasn't it. Uh, so Mr. Grizzly stepped away, so uh, I'm trying to look for some uh, video of his reaction so that I can play it for you, and uh, so I'll have to wait for Mr. Grizzly to come back for that. Um Indigenous people and uh, the disabled community uh, are the people who have the most legitimate gripe about what's going on because uh, the disability benefit was definitely not all, uh, not even close to what people uh, thought it would be or had hoped it would be. And especially with after all of that consultation and all of that delay, it's, oh, we have to make sure we get it right and stuff for, for that to come out. That was like, wah, 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 wah. And I do not know why the liberals did that because it, in one way, it's almost like, oh, gee, why did you even bother then? If you're going to do it, you, you were really going to half ass it that way. And you can't even say half ass. It's like one tenth ass it, <laughs> like you did. Um, and then for the indigenous community, and I had not noticed that when it was when I read, uh, when I listened to the budget speech, but even though the word indigenous appears in the budget document over 400 times, it was not mentioned once in the budget speech. The word indigenous, nor reconciliation. And uh, there was a, a big request from the indigenous community with regard to uh, having a sizable uh, down payment put on the infrastructure deficit within in the indigenous communities. And while there was uh, a little bit uh, for that, it was uh, pretty much a trickle. Uh, so these are the two groups that I would have expected having the wall to wall. Oh my God, isn't this terrible coverage? But yeah. No, instead we had people uh, on Bloomberg saying, hey, I sold my corporation for $500 million. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like, fuck off. <laughs> it's just, uh, like, it's just, 500 million. Eh? 500 million I sold my business for, and now I have to pay more. Fuck off. <laughs> just, just yeah, fuck again, like I said, you, I, you you spent more and paid more in taxes than I earned last year by, by multitude. I, I I really don't care. I, well, I worked hard for that. Yes, you worked hard for five hundred million. Let's get realistic. Anybody who gets that rich, I'm sure you have put hard work in. But I have said to people who have said, "Well, you know what? This is going to cost me." And I go, "Oh, right. Uh, do you equate hard work to to earnings?" Of course. I go. So why am I not a freaking billionaire? They shut up real quick when I when I hit them with that one. Hmm. There, uh, 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 uh huh. And you were saying, you, you were saying, no, they clam up real quick. Hard work does not equate to earning or income. It simply no. doesn't. There's no relation. None. No relation. Zero. I mean, let's, let, let's put it this way: if it went on hard work, baseball players would be being paid like teachers, and teachers would be playing, being paid like baseball players. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like. Firefighters would be billionaires. Right. Soldiers, police officers, first first responders. You know how much yeah. more money they should be paid for what they do? You're going to tell me that isn't hard work? Yeah. Come on. And as well paid as doctors are? Yeah. Surgeons yeah. that save your life? Give them a boost too. Give them a boost. <laughs> so, you know, um, you need to calm down. Well, I saw. You're being thing. too loud.
I saw a thing <laughs> online the other day from Mark Cuban, who I follow on Twitter, and uh, somebody said, oh, yeah, well, how much are you paying tax? He goes, I'm uh, sending a check for $288 million tomorrow. They're like, uh, what? And I'm happy to pay it. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I am happy to pay it. Because that's what you do to live in a country like this, where you have all the opportunities to create what we've created. Mm-hmm. Mark Cuban is a decent human being for a billionaire. <laughs> for a billionaire. <laughs> well, I mean, come on. Most billionaires are not exactly good people, but Mark Cuban walks the walk and talks the talk. Yep, indeed. He does. Uh, now, uh, so I wanted to... Sh- for me? Yeah, I don't... Do we have time for it though i know you have a hard out in a, a yeah, minutes. Like five minutes uh it, it's yeah, about can... four minutes okay let me just see if i can cue it up here all right so uh we'll show one reaction it's mr jagmeet singh uh, speaking and um if you would kids and cubs uh, i would like to propose a drinking game <laughs> Boy. every time you hear him say the word force or forced or any variation of force Please have a sip. Well, it's well. It better be coffee because if it's whiskey, you'll be hammered out of your skull in five minutes. <laughs> That's how long this clip is. Here we go. Let's have a look at this. I do not see anything. Oh, sorry. <laughs> look at this look at nothing this. happens it helps if i turn it on <laughs> uh, there we go uh, there we go i gotta turn it on uh. give you a quick sec you know in position okay there are some things in this budget that we fought for that we spent time hearing from canadians and we forced this government to deliver what? those include protections for renters renters live in constant fear that they're going to get rent evicted or kicked out of their homes because large corporate landlords want to buy those buildings and then evict them. We force this government to what? put in place a renter's protection fund, something that we've been calling for for over a year. And that's gonna help people stay in their homes and keep some of those affordable units affordable. We fought to force this government to what? bring in some relief for, for parents and kids. So the kids when they go to school can get a nutritious meal with a national school food program. That's gonna give some relief to parents. It's gonna take one thing off their plate, save them money. We also force this government what? to move forward on covering free birth control, Jesus free diabetes Christ. medication, and devices. That's going to save thousands of dollars for millions of Canadians. We force this government to bring what? down the... Okay, he, this is ridiculous. <laughs> you didn't force anybody to do anything. You have a supply and confidence agreement where you work together to make these things happen. Uh, I keep it rolling. I'm only on my fifth shot. Foster Canadians. That's some relief in a time when Canadians are really feeling squeezed. We force this government to deliver what? that. Six. Let's be absolutely clear. This would have never happened but for the fact New Democrats forced the Liberals what? to Seven. give this relief to Canadians, to give a bit of a break to Canadians. Uh, there are some concerns, though. We are, we're concerned about the fact that the Liberals uh, ignored the opportunity to take on corporate greed. We know the major driver that is driving up the cost of living is corporate greed. When it comes to buying groceries and you're paying more than ever before, that's corporate greed. When you're paying some of the highest cell phone and internet fees in the world, that's corporate greed, driving up the cost of your cell phone and internet fees. When you look at trying to find a home and speculators keep on driving up the cost of housing and corporate landlords are, are scooping up all the available housing, that is corporate greed that's making it harder for people to find a home. That is a major problem. That no makes argument life unaffordable. with any of that. And the liberals fail to use the opportunity they had to take on corporate greed. But let's also be clear about the conservatives. The conservatives want to take this all away from you. They want to take away childcare. They've been open about that. Pierre Polyev wants to take away childcare. He wants to take away dental care from seniors, even though he's had it for most of his adult life paid for by taxpayers. He wants to take that away from seniors. He wants to take away pharmacare from people that need that extra support. He wants to take that away, and he wants to cut further. He wants to cut healthcare, he wants to cut pensions, he wants to cut EI. He is gonna make things even worse for Canadians. But there are some concerns we have in this budget as well, and I wanna lay out some of those concerns we have. We're concerned about the disability benefit that we fought for being only $200 a month. That is far too little to to meet the needs of people living with disabilities. We're concerned that this government has not laid out the plan to address the gap in infrastructure and housing funding 
for indigenous communities. That's a serious concern. We're concerned about the loss of 5,000 public sector employees. Serious concern as well. So we've got some, some serious concerns in this budget. Um, there's things that we fought for, and, uh, and we're going to continue to use our power as we have throughout this minority government to fight for Canadians to make Ottawa. Okay, and that is NDP leader Jug Meets. So, one note on that uh, the NDP leader came up to give that scrum eight minutes into the budget speech being read. Yeah, so he hasn't even read the whole damn thing yet. Well, they probably got, you know, oh, yeah, up and lock up and all that kind of stuff and, you know, messages caught back and forth and whatever. But yeah, he didn't, uh, didn't even have the respect to stay in the house at least till at least maybe like 30 minutes or for, you know, or the mm -hmm. speech, why not? He just like, he was the first one out already. And speaking of out, I have to go like yeah. right now. So we'll, yeah. we'll just wrap it up short and sweet. Thanks to everybody for joining today. I really got to get out of here. I'm going to be late and I can't afford to be late. So We'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to cue the cock and then we're going to get out of here. Sorry, I know I'm cutting it real short, but that's how it goes some days. See you later. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music.